John 9, welcome to the Bridge 99 FM, officially to the crossover. Yes, I respect. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's been a pleasure, and it was an even bigger pleasure going to see you. Now, for the fans listening in Jamaica right now, let's just go back a little bit and talk about how exactly you are in Tanzania. Well, I left Jamaica. I'm trying to center myself so you can see me properly. I don't know what's left and right. Oh, okay, here we go. So I left Jamaica in 2022 uh, on a promotional tour um, to launch my album, Note to Self. And as with the last album, I wanted to launch it on the continent. So we started in Kenya and then we did the actual album launch in Ethiopia, which was great. But a few days after the launch, then the world went crazy. And I wanted to go back to Kenya, but the borders were closed. We were supposed to be headed to the UK, then back to the US, but you know, it hit those countries really hard first. I'm like, uh -uh, I'm not going over there. And my road manager, um, Black Lion, was like, Tanzania. And my other road manager, you know, Biggs was like, yeah, you know, that's a possibility. We have a consulate over there. He used to live here as well. He hadn't been here in a while, but you know, he was comfortable enough. They were like, that's a better option than trying to stay in Ethiopia right now. So went across Mama Betty, you know, the consulate of Jamaica. We are connected in many different ways, but it was the first time I was meeting her and she left her home open and was like, yo, come. So we were there, it was supposed to be for two weeks and two weeks turned into three months and then we were like okay do we leave spoke to my family they were like i'm just crazy over here and at the time tanzania had a really incredible president that had you know <laughs> made me feel very comfortable because he was kind of on a different wavelength than the rest of the world and so tanzania felt a little different from what was happening in the rest of the world and it made me comfortable enough to decide that hey i think i should stay Three months turn into six months, turn into eight months, turn into two years, turn into two and a half years, turn into easily <laughs> life. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> but the thing about that is it's beyond brave, first of all, to come out of your comfort zone and go to a whole different country. And yes, part of the time you did get kind of, you know, COVID trapped as a lot of people like to refer to it. But the truth be told is to actually find a new home like that. What made this place? give you that energy i think that's the biggest question a lot because it's not like you moved here and you were just still giving us what you always gave us it's almost like you took yourself away from jamaica in ways certain ways not always i don't think i took myself from jamaica specifically I well think I, I, I speak about the inside. fans when i mean jamaica i mean like us the fans here who, who we kind of saw a little yeah. bit not too much but a little more of you you know, I I thought it was necessary to do something for myself. I spent the last ten years building um, building a space for myself and others in this industry, serving in this industry, sacrificing a lot of myself on a personal, emotional, physical, feminine level, and a lot of you know I had to shut down a lot of things in order to do this work in this industry not just reggae music but just in the entertainment industry in general it is very taxing on the soul you really you know especially as a woman and in order to do it well and you know the way i operate in business i am managing my career myself i am working with others and, and grooming people to do particular kinds of work and wellness and music and you know I'm involved in a lot of things and I put everything I have into it and I didn't realize how tired I was and how much I needed to just defragment and kind of yeah. take a step back and look at the fact that hey this is why you entered the music industry you wanted to be here in Africa you wanted to actualize some of the things that you envisioned and that you spoke about and so, you know, a lot of the things you read and you learn in theory, I wanted to put them into practice now for myself. I wanted to refill my cup. And, you know, the more time I spent doing that, you know, at first you think, I'm going to do this and, you know, I'm going to get some time off. Yeah. But then you realize you don't even know what that requires of you. 
you have to be still you have to pause everything you have to sleep you have to rest you have to be quiet you have to shut all the outside voices down and you know that whole covid experience was a was that's what it was for for those of us who are you know paying attention in that kind of way it was an opportunity for us to to surrender and shut down and and listen inside to see what's supposed to come next of us you know and i took the opportunity to do that and you know, a lot of people would be scared to do got, that a lot of people especially people um who have hit a certain stride with their career would be petrified to do what you did like uh, and every time I think about that, it, it's the education behind it, I think, that you have. Because you went to, to school for psychology, the mind. And you understand, you know, the struggle that a lot of us have in our minds and how it stops us from doing things. And, you know, I, I, I kind of miss having that kind of conversation with you locally. But could you talk to people about it? Because I think right now with Jamaica, I, I know you've been watching the news. You've been seeing all of the aggression that's been happening, students stabbing students, I mean, shootings, all these things going on. And and I just would love for you to talk to Jamaica and, and give us a little bit more of your insight and perspective on how we can maybe somehow start to get things back on track. Get things back on track. <laughs> or or on, at think... least on the rails, because right now we're fully <laughs> off the rails. I mean, this isn't a this isn't a no problem, you know. I mean, at first it was like domestic violence. Remember the trend in domestic violence started to be highlighted really, really yeah. seriously, like like two years ago into 2020, 2021, when you started to see man chop up woman head and all kind of craziness. And now it's trickled down to the children, you know. And there is that current of death of 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 you know negative sweeping not just the island but the west in general or you can even say the world i mean look at what the covid situation was it was a time of death too you know and not just from covid because covid wasn't even the thing that was killing the most people <laughs> like things that come from the way people eat cancer yeah. and and other diseases just lifestyle yeah. diseases have been just wiping people out, you know? So there are lots of different things. And if you look at lifestyle diseases and how people eat, gut health is directly related to mental health. So I think also, the, though, the I think also, down, though, I would like to stick with the mind for a second because I think also, though, a lot of the kids that are going back to school, um, they weren't able to get enough help as far as learning communicative skills. You know, they were separated from each other and now they're put back together. And I don't think a lot of them understand. And a lot of parents are under pressure because they're just trying to maintain. They're trying to keep their head over water, you know. So if there are ways that maybe true. we can... These, yeah, if we we can, can take these are the things that we expect to hear. These are the things that we think of immediately, you know, the communication issues and, you know, parents. Are, these are the things we expect to hear. And I know you don't want to hear, oh, it's the food that they're eating. But the younger you are, the more susceptible you are to, you know, poor nutrition having a negative impact on your growing brain. So in addition to the fact that these children are compromised in their gut health and therefore their mental health, they have no examples because their parents are children too, a lot of them. Yeah? And in addition to them being children, they're put in can't a really pressure deny that, can we? because of the times and because of the fact that those who don't have a spiritual life require, I mean, money to be their God. So in the absence of money, they lose faith. You can't talk to them about God. You can't talk to them about anything else because they have no money to feed themselves. And they have no money to express their love. So you have this repeated cycle of, of just decline, mental health. And we, we neglect to think. We think mental health is a poor people thing. Or we think do you think because it's a, being repeated, you know, though, John 9, do you think because the cycle... Do you think because the cycle is being repeated so often that it's becoming worse with each, each generation? Absolutely. It's evolving. It's intensifying. It's adapting. You know, it is a monster that is adapting and it is eating more people. It is spreading. 
And that is, you know, it causes fear. And fear is at the root of a lot of these diseases too. And it is a disease of the mind. And children are disconnected from reality. And I mean, we can't say always the type of movies that they're watching and the fact that movies have become so much more graphic now and they don't really understand the implications of violence because they see it on TV or the music or all of these things. They, those are things we can't control. Yeah. What can we control? Because we have to bring the conversation down to what can we control individually in our own lives? Because we can complain about what's happening in the world till morning. What can you control in your life? Things like detoxing your body, right? Things like I, getting more physical exercises to, to get out some of that latent energy. Those are the things yeah. you can control. You know yeah, I, mean? I had a conversation with the mom and she was... And she was speaking about the fact that she was over a friend of hers house and her friend is like many parents who right now what they do is as soon as their kid gets home from school they allow their kid to TV. yeah go right in front of the tv or the TV socializing them children yeah so or they let them go right um to the tablet you know she said you know a six-year-old jumps on tiktok and she's twerking and making tiktok videos at that and age they can't and control they're not policing the things they don't know what their children their children are so tech savvy that they can't they think that they have parental controls on those devices and they don't they can't stop the children they have no yeah. idea what's happening they have no idea who is really no children open separate children. accounts they'll yeah. open another account under a different name Kids know what to do. Absolutely. But, and but so now you're a mom. Be... Now you're a first time mom. Does it scare you? No. This doesn't scare me. This doesn't scare me. You know what scares me? I scare me. <laughs> I scare myself. And I'm like, <laughs> nine? Are you going to? And it's like every day it's waking up and like, I have to do the absolute best that I can. I have yeah. all these things that I imagined I would do when I, and I wanted my child so I could be this type of mother. And I watched myself not do some of the things I thought I would do. And, you know, I was going to be like cloth diapers and I'm <laughs> using hoggies. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm failing as a parent. <laughs> and it's just kind of relaxing some of the things like, OK, man, like, let's take it down a notch and just yeah. kind of coming to terms with, you know, the process of softening. Like it took me years to soften to the place where I could allow this to happen and you know yeah. that i could receive this kind of blessing and know that i have softened i'm just continuing to do that in terms of watching him grow i'm watching him grow every day and i'm just trying to be present and yeah. i'm trying to make eye contact with him i'm trying to understand him i'm trying to do as much as i can to just give him what he needs without yeah. imposing too much of myself on him. And I mean, he's, he's our baby though. He's an infant. But now is the time to practice that, you know? So a lot of the things you read and, oh, this is how you must do that, and sleep time and not too much holding, and not too little holding, or let them sleep through the night, or wake them up to feed them. And I'm like, yo, I just go and make this you tell me what to need for right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because there is no blueprint. There is no, okay, this is the right way to be a mother. I'm like, I'm just going to pay attention. Yeah. He's extremely communicative. And I think there's an advantage to just paying attention to your children. And I think that's going to work in the long run. Because I, I think, think you nailed it right there. Parents paid attention. Yeah, pay attention. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, in the reality of things, in the reality of the world, a lot of parents are under pressure. But that cannot be your excuse not to at least take the five minutes that you go pick them up or drop them off from school. Or, you know, if you come in late to work... Say it again. Yeah. I'm saying it's the quality of the time because yeah. children don't trust their parents. They don't know their parents. Like the the, the, the little things that they're watching on TV perpetuate yeah. the stigma that your parents are detached from you. Oh, your parents are big and stupid. They don't know anything, right? It's your friends that you must hang out with and know yeah. and teach and learn, right? So that disconnect, you don't have a, a situation where there's village and there's elders and you listen to the stories from the elders and you, you, you feel open and able to talk to your parents. That has been lost. And so if you yeah. don't feel like it's them parents I said that, that today. Who the way to talk to? Where's the mm -hmm. granny on the That's porch dangerous. watching the kids in the yard? Where's the granny that used to be hanging around yeah. the neighborhood to make sure you don't see them no more? And you have old people, you know, but you don't have elders. So those yeah. old people are just little 
broken children trapped in big people body. They are not elders, mm. right? Granny competing with daughter and they've got it in there. And, I'm, and that's not a poor people thing either, right? No. That is every level of society. People who will not let go of their youth, who do not see the grace in aging, who do not look at, you know, the process of evolving to our, you know, because everybody afraid for death. So everybody just yeah. trying to do as much as they can to look young and to feel young and to act young because they're just holding yeah. on. You know what I mean? And so it's just, it's a sad reality, you know? And there's so little that we have control over in this world that again, I want to just say, we have the most control over in your life is your breath, you know? And then what you eat. And then your thoughts. Yeah. You see them three simple, in, in, I mean, as simple as you take it. Say to, those three things in again, life, just in case. It. Say those three things again. <laughs> The things you... The three things, breath, say those three. Yes. Your breath, what you take into your body, and what you keep in your mind. Managing those three things. You know what I mean? If we can start there, I think everybody have the solutions to their own problems. You what does I mean? all of this mean, though, in, in terms of your music career, though? Because a lot of us miss you. I mean, like seriously, severely. I flew across to Africa, not just for you, but you know, G Money, but you were like 50% of the other 50 of this whole entire trip because I missed that energy. Yoga with John ja Nine, just, and I don't even hang with you on a regular. It's just knowing you were there and I could give you a call if I need you and now you're just gone. You know, where's the music? What's, what's you happening? You just sit and give me a call. <laughs> yeah, I and know. That's true. But... And I hear that a lot, you know, I hear that. You know, once you move, like, oh, wait, there are people who pay attention to you. We don't even know they're watching. You don't even know they're listening. You don't even know they missed you because they're not really sent out because they're afraid or them, you know. I'm like, what? So you wouldn't see me in a Jamaica anyway, in a message, in a message. Send a shout out, talk to me. We're still there. We're still writing. We're still creating. We're still exploring self and documenting and creating in different ways. I did some, you know, I did a, a self help challenge in 2020 the notes to self challenge which i want to redo because that was an amazing experience to share with people in that way you know using my psychology degree to help people um and i think that's why you confuse people technology as well yeah we're doing things in technology as well with her because the ganja again we can't leave it out because i mean we're talking about health and wellness now and we're talking about things like respiratory illness you can't leave out the ganja you have to be yeah. making sure that people understand that ganja it's not just for recreation it's not even mostly for recreation like right now everybody needs to be growing some so they can blend up those leaves yeah have them see us and then sour some beef tea and just know what to use because big pharma don't care about you so you have to yeah. understand how to heal yourself and to prevent disease in your body you know what I mean? So we did the the um, the NFT. We using technology, mixing that with wellness, and hitting them up in that way too. Everything besides the music, I was waiting, I was watching what's happening in music, because ten years ago when I started, I wanted to fill the gaps that I saw. So again, I'm not here looking. Okay, no, you have to do this because everybody I do this. They have to make sure say in other team. I said no. What is missing? What is needed? And so you step back. So you can make sure that when you step forward, it's serving in the most efficient way. Because we're not out here just trying to, you know. That takes guts. Everybody is not ready. Everybody's not ready to take a chance and step back from what they feel is guaranteed money or guaranteed paycheck. A lot of people are really, really not ready to take that jump, especially people are afraid of a recession but in coming a up. Some of them need it because guess what? You see, if you don't step back and you keep pushing, 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 and you don't really know what to do because a lot of it, I, I started in this industry when I was already like 25, yeah. right? Went on 27. Mm -hmm. I was, I knew who I was and I knew what I was doing and what I wanted to enter and how I wanted to enter, how long I wanted to do it and where I wanted to go before I enter it. But that's just me because I'm seeking yeah. in that particular way, right? Some of these people, them don't even know themselves and them jump in it because they can sing or because they can write and DJ. But they don't even know. They haven't done the work of understanding who are you and what is your purpose. Is this really what you're supposed to be doing? Just because you can sing don't mean that is that you must do it. Right? What is the toll it will take on you? Are you prepared to pay that toll? Do you understand how to replenish yourself when they have sucked you dry? You understand yeah. what I'm saying? 
yeah. you cannot answer these questions honestly for yourself, then you may not be where you're supposed to be. But guess what? You can't tell a man that, and you can't tell a woman that. So let them find out for themselves, right? I can't tell anybody to, how dare I tell anybody to step back? I just have to know when it's my time. And how did I know? Just show me. Because the relationship I have with spirit is such that I am sorry. I'm like, listen, if this is what I must do, show me very plainly. Right? And that and was only found out I do to make sure that I am paying attention to myself. And that can only that be found out sense. by being able to sit in silence. You can only find that out by being able to sit in silence. And that is a key factor. So if you're one of those people that you're afraid to be alone, then you need to understand why you're afraid to be alone. I wish we had more time. Yeah, I can talk to you Nikki. forever. You know that. And our, you see how quick it went by? And he was like, Nikki, oh, long though. Oh, long. You see how you like literally batted me up. But people need to hear you because they need to hear the truth. Whether they believe you or not, whether they're ready to listen or not, because even me, you already... You see, I'm not going to say no more. They see my journey. It's a real thing right now. So just Your promise everyone, un- promise everyone team. music for 2023. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. For 2022, and, what do you mean? Yeah. Music is on the way. I'm working okay. on it. And the music that I have prepared is thoughtful. Some of it is potentially provocative. Right, I'm a different. I mean, there are aspects of myself that I am willing yeah. to share now that I probably wasn't willing to share before. There's evolution that has happened that has made me more confident and comfortable yeah. sharing certain things. You know what I mean? There are themes that I want to expand upon, and it's not just with the music. If we do it in music, we have to do it. You know, as above, so below. We do it in the other type of work. We do it in the <laughs> wellness. We do it in everything. Because people are dynamic. And sometimes yeah. you think, oh, the way my right is so you can't simplify for whatever. No, I do it because I love you. I want to push you to do a little more. Just read a little more. Do a little more. Life requires more of you now. And you can numb yourself with certain type of thing all you want, right? With your chemical and the food the way I eat and so you know, the happy, happy dancey dance, that's good. But that can't be all. Because balance is key. And at the end of the night, and the party done, and you're drunk, and you go home, and you're better, and you're balling, and nobody don't know. And you're losing mind, and you're, uh, and you come up, and you just make sure so your makeup look well good, and your clothes shop, and you smell good, and you come out, and nobody knows what's going on in your house. What type of life is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I'm thinking, and I say, no, man, we'll take care of them part of you. We get some music where you, when you go home, and you start mad, turn on that, listen to that song, yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah. and i'm be waiting for that new music but in the meantime john I, i'm gonna take it away with this song because this is my reminder that no matter what everything is on me and i'm gonna be okay john i follow her yes. right now on social media what's social media give it to them right now john I, online there Cross you go the it's the bridge 99